imagine for a moment you really want to get to know the real Nick Cage, Nicholas Cage, the actor. And you, you've heard about him and you want to know for yourself. The first thing you would do is you would watch all of the movies that he's been in. You would, upon close examination, discover that a lot of them are just bad that some of them are eh, mediocre, but that a couple of them, like Raising Arizona, Leaving Las Vegas, are great. And you would say, something might be there. Then you would read everything you could get your hands on about Nick Cage. You would discover he actually has a, a, a different name, Nicholas Coppola. Maybe not who you thought he was. And you would discover more about him, but you would also discover that the things you could read about him online and in magazines and books also is just, there's not a lot of good stuff there. Once, one or two things there, but still, a lot of junk. So then, if you're really wanting to know who Nick Cage is, who he really is, and if you can really know who he is, then you would have to realize it's up to you to try and meet him. I know this sounds like a stalker, but just go with me. So then you would try and find out where Nick Cage lives. And you would want to go to that city and you would want to find out where Nick Cage is frequently seen and you would want to go to those places and hang out there. Maybe do some things there to spend your time there. So that occasionally you would see Nick Cage, catch a glimpse of him. Now, he might be in a disguise, wearing a, a hat or sunglasses or a scarf or a cape. It is Nick Cage after all. And you would discover that the more you are there, the more you would bump into him. And before too long, you'd be able to say hi, because you were constantly running into him. Then you would begin to have a conversation with him on occasion and get to know him. And then after that time, you would be able to know all you wanted to know about who Nick Cage is what he's like, and you'd be able to separate truth from fiction. Now, this little parable that I've set up, and that's what it is, is my personal analogy, personal allegory for what it means to pursue God and whether or not God actually exists. I have had Several people, in, in a kind of a challenging way, and some in a respectful way, ask me, how can you know God exists? Some people say, prove to me God exists. Show me the evidence. Well, I wish I could do that. I wish I could just, you know, hand somebody a box and say, here, here's the evidence. And a lot of people do that with the Bible. Here, here's the evidence. But then a lot of people just choose to dismiss the Bible, which I don't think you can, fair, fairly speaking, if you're going to be fair about it, you can't just dismiss the Bible, okay? Because it's not just one thing. It's not, it's, it's complicated, it's complex. The Bible has been mistreated and abused so much. But dismiss it? I don't think you could do that. But in this analogy, an analogy is not perfect. In the analogy, I came to my decision about Nick Cage by my own dogged pursuit of him. I did the work to be able to get an answer for myself. And I believe that if you, as a person, 
if you really want to know whether there is a God or not, you have to do your own work before you can find an answer that will satisfy you. And the reason I say that is <clears throat> if you want a flippant answer, you've already got it, whatever it is. If you just want something that confirms what you already believe, then why, why, why talk about it? If you're seriously asking the question, the only answer that will satisfy you is the one that you come to through your own intellectual, spiritual, hard work. Because I can't hand you what I've done and say, here is the answer because that's what I've done, okay? Um, I think that what happens is we become so enamored with the scientific method, we wanna treat everything like it's science. And this is faith. You cannot treat faith like it's science. It's the, the, one of the biggest disservices done to the Bible is the creation scientists who want to try and treat the Bible like a science book when it's not, that it's so beneath the Bible to do that. You might as well try and make it a cookbook. And it's not. That's ridiculous. It's disrespectful of Scripture. If you want to know whether God exists or not, if you want to have an answer, you have to do that work yourself. I'm sorry I can't just hand it to you. Uh, so I would encourage you to try and find that answer. Some of you may have done it. I can't tell you um, what that answer will be. Um, I would say you know, like it, like in, in the Nick Cage allegory analogy, go where Nick Cage is, where he goes. Go to where God is. And please note, the Bible doesn't say that God's going to be in church. Jesus tells us in Matthew 25, if you go to the poor and the hungry and the, the people on the fringe, the strangers, the people in prison, the sick, the needy, the dying, the oppressed, if you go in, if you are with them, you are with Jesus. So you will see them if you go there. Um, at least that's what book says you may not believe that but you know if you do all that work and you go to those places and you do those things that benefit those people and you don't you don't find out if god exists or not then well at least you did good things and became a good person for you know a reason and that's okay um, so if you ask me the question, show me the evidence, show me the proof, I have to answer you back with a question. How serious are you about asking that question? Because I can't just give you the answer. I can't just hand it to you. If you want to know the answer to that question, you will have to go find it if you really want it. Because only you can give yourself that answer. And God might help. But that's what I believe. <clears throat>